Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Jazz 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make buttonholes. So to start out with, get out your buttonhole foot. It looks like this. And take one of the buttons that you're going to use in your garment and put it right there. Notice how this slides. So we want to have it just locked in right there. That's going to help the machine know how long to make your buttonhole. So we can take the foot off like this. There's a little button in back. Put the buttonhole foot on. Make sure that your top thread does not get caught in there. Now I'm using two different colors of thread which will contrast with my fabric so that you can see the different parts of the buttonhole. Now this here, there's no slit in the buttonhole foot so I'm going to just take a single stitch, needle down, needle up, pull my fabric out of there take that stitch out of there and that pulls the thread through the hole in the buttonhole foot. Okay, so when you are making buttonholes you want to have more than just two layers. You can have a layer of interfacing in here or you can actually use three layers of your fabric and I've seen nice dress shirts where the front placket is made that way. Okay, so we want to mark the beginning of the buttonhole as well as the center. So I'm going to go with a center line which is going to be parallel to the side of my fabric and the beginning of the buttonhole. Now I'm using this wonderful pen. This is called the friction pen. This is erasable with friction or with um, heat like from your iron. So it's great to use on light colored fabrics. Now it will helpful, be helpful for you to look in your book on page 25, and you can see that in the table of contents, this is helpful information to have. I'm going to show you how to make a buttonhole, but for your own reference, look here because you've got pictures, and this shows you where the buttonhole starts, which is a, with a bar tack right there, and then it stitches in reverse in a zigzag. It does a bar tack at the back, and then it stitches forward in a little zigzag. So that's the four steps of the buttonhole. Okay, and then also up here, if you notice it, it tells you which um, pattern to use. So we're going to do that as buttonhole right there. And the stitch length, which should be, and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute, but the stitch width, notice it gives you quite a bit of a range. So you don't need to make it at the very widest. You can actually have it back off a little bit. I would go with five. That seems to be pretty good for me. And then of course we want to have the stitch length up here in the buttonhole area. Okay, so let's switch this to buttonhole using the selector knob. There's buttonhole right there. And then we need to pull down the buttonhole lever. Now, the way to remember all these things is you should see three buttonholes. One here, this little embossed buttonhole symbol then a buttonhole up here and one right here. So if you see only two, then you haven't done all three of those. So you need to see three. Okay, now we're gonna put this underneath here and it does help to kind of tip the foot a little bit, maybe even lift up the presser lever a little bit until you've got that right there. Now the, the long center line that's gonna go right in the middle of the buttonhole needs to be right in the middle of the foot. There's a little dip in the uh, plastic right there and you can see it's right underneath that. Also we want to make sure that this side is parallel with the edge of the foot and the little cross mark should be about halfway between the front and the back of that little rectangle. Now we need to make sure that this is pushed back so we push it towards the back. That tells it that where to start in the buttonhole cycle. So remember to do that each time you start a new buttonhole. Push that towards the back. Okay, so our threads are to the side. I like to start out with my threads just holding on to them just like I am with my fingers here just for the first couple stitches. And it knows it makes a bar tack first. Nice strong bar tack and then it stitches towards the back just like the pictures in the book showed us. Gets to the end, makes that little click and makes the bar tack coming forward. Now when it gets to the end, just slow down because the machine doesn't know where to stop. It will just keep going. So you want to make a couple little stitches into that beginning bar tack. Now you're done. So we lift this off, 
pull it out, and if you were going to make another buttonhole, I would recommend just pushing that back um, to the back. Okay, so before I cut my threads, I'm going to cut off these little thread tails that are from the beginning because those thread tails are not going to come unstitched. They've had stitching going across them. But we do cut off these after we've cut those. Now again, I've got different colors of thread so you can see. Most of the time you're going to have um, same color of thread as your fabric, but for learning purposes, this is what we're doing. Now I'm going to pull my bottom thread so I get a little bit of loop of my top thread and you can see my top thread's disappearing to the back. With this kind of buttonhole, you need to tie off your um, thread tails. So I'm going to do a nice little square knot. Left over right, right over left. There we go. Okay, and then the thread tails, you never want to cut them close to this um, knot here, otherwise they end up getting too short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury my thread tails between the layers like that. So I'm taking... I love these big darning needles. Every pincushion should have one. Easy to thread, easy to use. Then cut off the thread tails so that they are hidden between the layers. Okay, next we take our wonderful seam ripper, which is an important tool to have whenever you are sewing. And I'm also gonna take a pin to kind of guard the end of that. Some of our seam rippers tend to get a little bit dull after they get old. And so it's just like a, a dull kitchen knife. You have to use a little force. Well, I don't want to accidentally cut through that uh, bar tack right there. So I'm going to take this, start at the end, cut most of the way there, flip it over, and you can see where I've already started cutting it. Reset my pin to guard that other bar tack. And again, start at the end and go towards the center. Now there's extra little threads that often happen here. We don't want to have those in there. We're going to trim those out really nice. There we go. Now I'm going to take the foot off so that I can take the, um, there we go, take the foot off so I can take that button out of there and I'm going to test my buttonhole. Let's see if this works. Yes. It's a little snug, which means I probably didn't cut it all the way to the end. I was being very careful, but it should be a little bit snug. You want your buttons to stay buttoned. You don't want it to come in, come unbuttoned by itself. So that's how you make buttonholes. Yes, it's certainly possible. You can go around this twice, or you can make this stitching a little bit more de dense by um, shortening your stitch length up here. You don't want to make it too short, otherwise it gets kind of bogged down there. And the bar tacks are plenty strong enough. So that's how you make buttonholes with your Baby Luck Jazz too. I hope you found this to be a helpful video. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our Montevilla YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.